The 6.5 is on the road here in San Jose at AMD's Advancing AI event. Daniel, it's been quite the event. I mean, the walk-ons from XAI, Sam Altman from OpenAI, and I heard people using the word training and instinct in the same sentence. Well, we always knew it was going to get to that point, but we also know that we're at this massive inflection right now where, yes, we are still talking pre-training and training era, but we've also entered this ex exciting yeah. inference era. And this is going to just create an explosive TAM. It's going to yeah. grow this AI space so much. And it really opens the door to a whole new share shift, market share uh, change, Pat. And it's a really good moment if you're AMD and you're entering this space right here, right now. Yeah, it really is. So, hey, let's dive in here. We have Andrew and Anoush from AMD. Guys, welcome to 6.5. First time. This is going to be great. Thank you. Thank Happy you. to be here. Yep. Yeah, we can cover off on a few different things. You, you heard us in the sort of preamble talking about just, you know, the walk-ons and what's going on and inference and training. But another big uh, thing that we definitely glommed on to today was about software. Um, you know, you've been very focused, and Anish, I'll start off with you, but you've been very focused on making open source a big part of your software approach. Why is that so important? Because I heard Lisa say at least three or four times, she reiterated that, you know, that we're open and it's not a closed garden, walled garden. I mean, why is that so important in shaping, you know, adoption of Instinct and Rockham and, and potentially really growing that particular market for you? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, the, the way we look at it is the rate of pace of innovation in AI is only going to accelerate. And to be able to catch up with that, you need the entire ecosystem to be with you and having an open platform allows you to bring in others and lift all boats. So you can bring in the best of the networking, best of the CPUs, best GPUs, but then layer it with software that again brings in the best serving infrastructure, VLLM, SGLang, LLMD. These are all like very fast moving innovations uh, that are happening in real time compared to competitors like proprietary stacks that you know the flagship product right now is lacking FP8 support, which is Mind blowing, but all of the open source ones are like you know already yeah. there. So it's uh, it's it's about speed. Yeah, um, yeah. I I appreciated Vamsi kind of going going through that. And if I look historically at in the long run, uh, what has driven growth? I mean, let's look at Unix versus Linux. I think that's probably the the best example. Uh, containers are probably another uh, one out there, but pretty much. Most everything is standard. So there are some examples of, of where proprietary goes quicker uh, and gets big, but in the long run, it, it definitely equalizes. So, Andrew, I want to uh, turn to you. Uh, seven or eight years ago, we saw the transition from training to machine learning. It was an 80-20 to 2080, and naturally, we're seeing uh, this transition uh, as well from, from training inference. Not that we're not training, we're still yeah. training. <clears throat> but a lot of this is going to the actually use of these models uh, with applications. How, how is AMD positioning itself to, to win in this massively growing, and I would argue what will be the largest opportunity for AI compute? Yeah, you, you mentioned, you, you heard the word training and instinct a few times in the same sentence. That continues to be an incredibly important segment of the market, yeah. but even more fast growing is the inferencing segment. And we're seeing that inflection point happen now, essentially this year where um, people make money on these models by inferencing, right? And so that's been a key focus. Most of the deployments that we did last year were really focused around inferencing deployments. This year with several large customers, we're doing significant training uh, deployments to augment that. So we're participating in both segments of the market. Both segments of the market are growing. Um, rapidly, uh, inferencing even more so off of a smaller base, and we see that actually being the larger segment of the market as we go forward. Yeah, just a, a follow-up to that, uh, I heard one of your customers, I think it was Microsoft, talk about the flexibility that they like if we can do training and inference with the same uh, a piece of silicon, but it's, it's one of those debates on, right, uh, do you need to do inference uh, on the same chip that you did training? The answer is no. Right, uh, but uh, there are some uh, built-in advantages. The flexibility, if you wanted to move the workload uh, around uh, in your data center, is that true here? That, that is absolutely true. Flexibility is a key attribute, a key buying attribute from our customers. So flexibility of infrastructure, the programmability of the GPU has, yeah. to this point, a lot of carried the day in terms of like the workloads are changing so rapidly. So flexibility of the actual compute engine as well as the overall infrastructure 
um, is important, yeah. and, and we see that trend continuing. Makes sense. And it's definitely good that, you know, you have the flexibility, and, and, and Anish, I'm going to ask you something about Rockham in a moment, but it's also, I think, a significant door opener, and I think I'd, I would be missing a big opportunity to clarify some things to the market if I didn't say that, you know, there's been a, it's been a moat for your biggest competitor in terms of that software stack. And I know a lot of work's being done with Rockham, but inference sort of changes the whole calculus because where you can get in on inference, where there's been a little bit more developer lock-in, there's not the same software requirements. They can go all in with AMD and it's like a new opportunity to come in and compete. So you have now an improved platform uh, and we'll talk about Rockham here, but you also have the opportunity to go into these, these and, and, you, and not only are you building, but these chips are really built for inference. The memory, the throughput, the tokens per dollar, you showed that 40% number. I mean, there's some really compelling data there that says, yes, you can do training on this thing, but if you're also you're doing training and inference, this thing could be better. But Absolutely. I mean, we see for a lot of our major customers, we get started on inferencing. They get to know our software stack, they get to know our platform, and then we expand to other use cases. And Meta was a perfect example. Yep. The initial use cases there were all inferencing. Now they're doing recommendation training and other training workloads. And so as the familiarity comes and comes together and builds, then we do more together. Well, we know the land and expand. It's uh, how cloud yep. was built. And yep. I'm sure that's how the agentic eco uh, era of e an ecosystem will be built. Yep. So we, let's get back to the software innovation though. Um, you know, Rockham has, like you actually just gave a perfect analogy. It's kind of come through, like we're gonna do a little bit more, we're gonna do a little bit more. And now we're seeing companies really starting to go more all in. What are the innovations that you think are driving that? And what are you most excited about that are gonna really make Rockham more and more competitive for that developer ecosystem? Yeah, I think it goes back to the original question of an open ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Today, Rockham is fully open source and we've gotten to a point where external developers are contributing hmm. critical pieces of uh, you know, enablement. For example, Rockham is really good on Instinct, but we had developers come in and contribute to run on like the Strix Halo and the client platform on Windows. Right now, Rockham runs on Windows, so this gives a pervasive software story for like a, uh, a college student to pick up their Ryzen laptop program on PyTorch and take that same program and now deploy at scale uh, on Instinct. So we are starting to layer the uh, pervasive software story on top of the pervasive hardware story and that brings in a good um, flow of you know, users, developers up into, our, into the uh, core of our data center business. Um, and Rockham itself, I think, you know, the cool part about it is, is it's like, what, what, is, what do we like about the Linux kernel? It's open and you can go write a new file system, BTRFS, because hey, I think we need a new file system. So Rockham is kind of getting to that same level where if you have to do training and we, are, you know, we need some new framework that allows for checkpointing and restartability and reliability, we can do it. But more importantly, anyone in the ecosystem can do it. So, you know, the um, 350 systems that we sent out to the Stanford labs and Berkeley, et cetera, there could be a research project that just says, you know what, I'm going to do the best reliability for training. Yeah. All I have to do is take this, and now they have the hardware, we have the developer cloud that we just launched. The software is open source. We don't need to be in the loop between innovation and unlocking the value. Yeah, Rockham has been on a, Rockham has been on a rocket ship. Um, I mean, I remember years ago when Rockham was an HPC play, right? Yeah. And some people think, oh, HPC must mean AI. Well, that's not the case. New feature, I mean, it, it's completely different. And, and uh, hats off to you. The, the rate of, of code commits as well. Do you do a weekly update, correct? Yes, yes. And that so, is, yeah. yeah. Uh, it just, uh, we, we, we actually release nightly Oh, okay. But we test and validate the like the entire software suite, and so we commit to a uh, biweekly release. So every two weeks, you get a release of Rockham with the latest inference, latest Docker's. The two weeks is just for us to like bake it a little bit. Yeah. But in reality, like we're we're building every night, and we are on the path to get every commit to be green, right? Like um, so, the ethos of this comes from like when I was working in Chrome and Chrome OS you have to be shippable every day. At any time, you should be able to ship code. Uh, and bringing that gives us immense acceleration of like software capabilities. And if something's not ready, it right. just is backed out, right? So that means you're always ready to yeah. ship. And that's a, that's a software mindset. And so AMD traditionally has built very good hardware. 
Now we have very good hardware with software being released like a software company. No, that's great. Uh, I became a believer last year when uh, Meta got up on stage. And you know, possibly the hardest grader out there. We can debate that, but I was, I was wondering, what, act, what will they actually say? And uh, they said, big improvement. Yeah. We're working hard together, right? But even that they would say anything nice meant a lot to me. And then they got up on stage today and had better things yeah. to say uh, about that. And that's, that's, that, 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 again, made, made me a, a believer. And the reason to believe is you know, people like you involved uh, nightly. Yep. You educated on me yep. on that. I thought it was like weekly, uh, yeah. but and just seeing the performance figures go go go, uh, the velocity is is going up yep. uh, yeah. as well. But in the AI era, Meta really is sort of one of the arbiters of what is really open. Yep. They've yep. really committed to that particular That's right. path. Python, PyTorch. Yep, yep. Yeah. And and to that point on, um, you know, when they came out and said, four hundred five B, they. Halo model that they just released was exclusively being served on the MI300, right? Yeah. That, that's, you know, kind of an inflection point of like, okay, that's ready to serve the best model yeah. at the time on AMD yeah. hardware. So talk about velocity, right? Hardware is on a velocity curve too, right? It used to be cool to, hey, let's bring in a new product every two years. Yeah. Okay. And then it was, okay, now we're going to commit to every, every year. But here we have 325X, 355X, very close together here. Talk to me about why you're doing this uh, and a little bit about the journey. Well, the pace of innovation is relentless, Pat, right? We, um, we actually pulled in our schedule for 355 by probably close to two months from when we, our initial target was. The team executed fantastically. And we're bringing to market, you know, we think something very competitive for, uh, for the second half of this year to serve our customers. Both inferencing and training, very competitive numbers versus the state of the art alternatives in the market. And our message around you know, great products at com very compelling TCO is, is resonating. So that's what we're all about. And we have the, the pedal down to the metal, so to speak, and we'll continue on that very accelerated release cadence. Yeah. yeah so, so, Andrew, I was uh, posting um, you know, feverishly on X throughout the, the keynote. And, you know, one of the things as I started uh, flashing 355 and flashing 400 is I had some people banging on me, well, not, they don't do rack systems, so are we even really talking A and B? And then <laughs> voila, you know, the rack systems, Helio shows up. Um, big moment. I mean, there's yeah. been a lot of deal making in the background. There was, uh, you know, the, the, the ZT systems acquisition. I mean, talk a little bit about this pivot because this changes your whole position in the market. It gives you a lot more TAM. It gives you a lot more opportunity. It also maybe changes the ecosystem and the relationships. Kind of, What is the strategic importance of going rack system and how does it drive AMD going forward? Yeah, so the rack system and the, the tight integration of all the key components, CPU, GPU, networking, all being co-designed in a, um, an architecture which can be rapidly deployed to market. I mean, that was the, the thinking behind the ZT systems acquisition. We have you know, a thousand engineers that have joined the AMD family from that with great thermal and mechanical and rack scale design expertise that we can then give that help to our customers, to our OEM partners, our ODM, our hyperscale customers to bring the, the Helio system to market. And you know that that scale up network networking uh, combined with you know the the scale out uh, networking that we've announced with our Polara Nix, um, those systems are going to provide the best TCO to market. And getting those systems to market in a rapid fashion, they're complex. Um, we're allowing innovation for our customers within this reference architecture that we're providing, and it's really a key part of our strategy moving forward. Well, it's very very. Uh let me just say those same people were, some were pleased, some were less pleased that you were so quick to be able to respond to them with your own solution. But it was- In very, real time. It, it, was, it was, I mean, look, the world was watching. I mean, this was one of those days, the world was watching, you know, we hear numbers in the trillions. It's funny how we shrug off numbers in the trillions now because it's become such commonplace, but you know, trillions of tokens and trillions of dollars are at stake. And Today was a day that I would say that AMD showed a number of different ambitions to get more of that market, more of that TAM. And Pat and I, we get to be the arbiters of who's good and who's not. That's being analysts. I think uh, we're in a good position to say that AMD is making a lot of great progress. Yep. So 
uh, uh, Anoush and uh, Andrew, thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks, it. Guys. And thank you, everybody, for being here with us. We're the 6-5. We are on the road at AMD's Advancing AI in San Jose, California. Check out all the other coverage from the event. We have a number of great conversations here. And, of course, subscribe and be part of our community. For this episode, though, we got to say goodbye. We'll see you all later.